This presentation describes an entirely new cloud ecosystem, a cloud ecosystem with the potential to grow as large as AWS, based on modest projections detailed in the presentation. The new cloud ecosystem runs Android apps with Ascender's groundbreaking enabling technology, a technology that makes running Android apps in the cloud practical and cost-effective. To fully understand the power of Android in the cloud, we will show a video demonstration. This new ecosystem closely couples cloud and mobile to create a seamless remote Android experience. Android in the cloud truly integrates the cloud-first, mobile-first paradigm to synergistic effect. We will present three demos. The first demo shows the functionality of Android in the cloud. In the second demo, we compare the performance of a local cloud server with a remote cloud server 4,000 kilometers away on another continent. The third shows multiple independent Android images running on one ARM server. This gives an estimate for the cost of the service. Two enabling technologies are used to create the Android in the Cloud service. A remote Android graphics protocol with very low resource usage, and an extremely efficient technique of running Android images in Linux containers. Ascender's Android in the Cloud allows remote execution of unmodified Android apps. The resources used by the remote graphical protocol are insensitive to the client display pixel count. A unique and counterintuitive feature is the capability to provide high performance while running on low bandwidth, high latency, wide area networks. In addition, a large number of the existing available apps can be run in the cloud without modification. Our cloud-based technology also provides an elegant solution to security and compatibility issues of BYOD. Typically, Less than 40 kilobytes per second of network bandwidth is used to provide low latency, full resolution, lossless compression with low computational complexity, and 60 frames per second graphic stream, all independent of the display resolution. This means a 4K display will use network bandwidth like a 720 pixel resolution display. Since the pixels are rendered on the client and no GPU is needed on the remote server, a very cost-effective solution is provided. We use Linux containers on a standard Linux cloud server to host multiple instances of Android images. Each container is completely isolated from other containers. Each Android instance runs independently without interaction with other instances. All data is located on the server, resulting in strong data security. Many different local clients are possible. They all work with the same version of the cloud server. We will demonstrate Android in the cloud in both private and public clouds. Either Intel or ARM servers can be used. In the demos, we use ARM servers. The local client is an x86 Intel Ubuntu machine. The local display client is an x11 program. In this system diagram, the server side is pictured on the upper part and the client side is on the lower part of the diagram, where we show some examples of use cases. Here we show Ascender's technology applied to a non-cloud use case. The Android phone functions as a normal phone. It also has the capability to provide remote graphics apps running on the phone, but being rendered on the wearable device, thereby allowing us to provide Android Wear apps to devices that are not running Android. You will see three live demos of Ascender's remote Android technology. To set the stage, we first demo a local cloud configuration. In demo number two, we show a real-time display of Ascender's remote Android from a distance of over 4,000 kilometers. Here we show the high quality of remote Android 
when coupled with limited bandwidth and large round-trip latency networks. On the third and last demo, we show how multiple instances of a sender's remote Android can be hosted on one ARM server, a resource-efficient approach. We show how ARM servers can economically enable remote Android with cost estimates to the service provider. We will now describe our setup for the demo. We are using a standard Ubuntu laptop as our remote client, and as our local server, an Odroid XU4, a 32-bit ARM processor with a Samsung Octo-Core system on chip. The XU4 is in a server configuration. The only connections are power and internet. The network configuration is a gigabit ethernet, and there is a standard ADSL connection to the internet. We will now show screen captures of the Ubuntu laptop. Okay, we're starting up the application. RA start starts it. We do RA attach, and we can see that some processes are running. It takes about um, about 15 seconds to start up this application or the Android in the container. Um, normally on a phone it takes about 50 seconds, so it's uh, over three times faster when, when you do it in a container. There are um, optimizations in the container you can do on the phone. When you go to the next, you click on a button, you go to the next uh, window, you can go into the contacts. This runs the standard Google Android contact program. Has not been recompiled. It scrolls smoothly down. It'll scroll to the left. It'll scroll back to the right. Uh, we can grab the scroll bar and go down quite smoothly. Next, we'll go into the phone dialer. Standard again, we go into the dialer, push buttons as it works, and since we have no SIM card on the Odroid, it doesn't allow us to dial out. We can go into the calendar, we see everything as we expect it. If we scroll up and down, we notice that the graphics work properly. Next, we'll go into the settings manager. We can go and look uh, for applications. Here we see the applications that are on the Android instance running in the cloud. We can now try to change the launcher. We go into Home and we'll pick the standard Android launcher. And we, when we go into the Home screen, we see that this is the Home screen of the standard Android Lollipop launcher. Is this at all practical for cloud that is not connected with a very fast network and a small round-trip latencies? The previous demos used gigabit Ethernet with a microsecond latency. When you're dealing with 10 megabit networks with 70 millisecond latencies, at least three orders of magnitude difference, remote graphics usually takes a big hit. Let's examine these two cases with the demo. One is in Paris, 4,000 kilometers away. One is local, one meter away. Here we see two windows. One is in Paris, one is local. We see very similar behavior when we scroll between the application windows. Let's go into an application we've seen previously. We can look at the contact application, for example left and right, scrolling up on the right, smooth, scrolling up on the left, smooth. Very, very similar. They react completely the same with very small differences in latency, but in effect, you can get very similar performance between a local and an internationally connected remote Android server. The local server is on the left, and the Scaleway public cloud server located in Paris is on the right. We will now demo multiple instances of Android running in different containers. Each container is isolated from all others. For this demo, we will run four Android images on an Odroid XU4. 
Here we see the four images, each one in its own window. The first one will run the contact list. In the second one, we'll run the standard dialer. In the third one, we see we have a different launcher, and we'll run the settings application. And in the fourth and last, we will run the cal calendar application. Let's see if all these applications respond. Everything scrolls smoothly. So we have four applications. Each one runs independently of the others, and they seem to run a reasonable response. Uh, it would be interesting to figure out how much would providing service for one customer cost. First, let's define the terms of service. We want 24-7 availability, fixed cost, and near-native performance. We can use the pricing of Scaleway's C1 ARM servers as a benchmark to price the service. A C1 server costs 2 euros a month. We estimate that one C1 server can support four Android images running in containers. This gives us a cost of 50 euro cents per month, or 6 euros a year. Once we have implemented the infrastructure for Android in the cloud, multiple use cases become possible. Let's examine one scenario. Durable goods are defined as goods with long lifetimes. Google updates Android software versions annually. Android smartphones are replaced by owners on average every two years. Usually two major annual software updates for smartphones are provided and then support is dropped. Smart TVs, however, are replaced by owners every six years on average, and will have the need for six major software updates. The task of keeping durable goods relevant over long lifetimes is daunting. An imaginary smart TV bought six years ago would likely be running Windows XP, not very useful today. By hosting the apps in the cloud, a future smart TV would be relevant for many years after purchase. In 2022, you should be able to access a new app on your smart TV that runs on Android 12.1 Quiche. This model will enable a long-term revenue stream years after the TV's purchase, provide long-term customer engagement, and will, of course, provide a need for a large-scale supporting ARM cloud. In 2016, approximately 150 million smart TVs were sold worldwide. If we assume 10% adoption of Android in the cloud, and assume that the remote Android cloud servers are scaled to support 25 client smart TVs comfortably, we would need 600,000 remote Android cloud servers for each year of smart TV sales to support 15 million smart TVs. This scenario assumes sales and Android in the cloud adoption volume to be flat. Thus, the combined number of cloud servers needed for steady state support is the yearly number of cloud servers times the average lifetime of smart TVs. This gives us 3.6 million cloud servers, the approximate current estimated size of the AWS cloud. Adding a second use case, such as a smart fridge, impractical with current technology, but feasible with Android in the cloud, the number of cloud servers needed to support the smart fridge use case would be greater than those of the smart TV use case. These are just two of many use cases that can be supported by Android in the cloud. We believe that our technology has the potential to allow Android in the cloud servers to gain a significant share of cloud presence and to achieve the fusion of cloud and mobile technologies. To become better acquainted with the full power and potential of Android in the cloud, let's talk.